I'll keep them distracted for a moment. Welcome. Welcome back from your break. Okay. Hello, YouTube. That time it works. Okay. Is it going to work for me? Hello. It's not on, is it? <laughs> well, now that you've had a chance to go out and get some more snacks, we're back for the second warm-up act before the main event of the lightning talks. <laughs> Today's speaker isn't a rocket scientist, but he did used to work with some, or at least worked with people who worked with some at the JPL. He's now at Craigslist, a small little company that I hear is hiring. He's written three things that you can use in the Unix world that are just there when you start up. RN, so you can find out what's happening in the world. Patch, so you can contribute to other people's stuff. And Perl, a way of life. <laughs> and here he is, our benevolent dictator for life, Larry. Let's, let's fix a few things. We're going to break backward compatibility. Let's fix a few things in Perl 5. Uh, what would you fix? Well, I expected about 20 or 21. And, um, you know, I got 361. 
Uh, it took me six months to read through them the first time. Uh, and then I didn't know what to think. <laughs> well, I laughed. <laughs> um, so, um, but, uh, you know, the, these uh, RFCs were uh, written by a wonderful uh, crew of people here. And uh, you, you're gonna, I'm going to show some of the RFCs uh, today. Uh, and, uh, you know, you'll see some names in them. Uh, the, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of, lot of names in here. Um, in fact, when I counted them up, if you just count the maintainers of the, of the RFCs, there are exactly 100. Uh, and that's, that's, that's cool. Um, you know, uh, that means that uh, um, I can easily uh, calculate statistics about it. So I can tell you that <laughs> Only three to four percent of these people are, are, are active in the Perl 6 development today. <laughs> uh, but no, no, take that in a good way. Uh, it means all of these people who contributed to the RFCs are really practical people, the sort who do real work, and they were writing about real problems. And they're still concentrating on solving their daily problems rather than the long-term problems. That's, that's, that's a good thing. Uh, we, we all scratch our edges and uh, so, you know, this, these RFCs were written by a bunch of people who were very practical, and that's a good thing. Um, I, you know, I, I, we didn't accept all the RFCs, uh, but if you see a name up there on a rejected RFC, I want you to know that I think of those, that person as just as much a hero as the RFCs that, that uh, were accepted. In fact, you know, People, I, I was actually surprised going through this time and, and seeing that we actually re, probably rejected more of Damien's ideas than, than we accepted. But then Damien has an awful lot of ideas, as you know. Um, most of our, our contributors nowadays in, in Perl 6 are actually newcomers, and that's a good thing too. And many of them didn't even know Perl 5. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, our, our communities naturally have some overlap and some, some, some divergence, and that's a good thing. So think of, the, think of all these names, if you see one, they're all heroes. Or heroines. Maybe they're all heroes. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, so you, you saw these, uh, you saw these, uh, no, I, you saw all these bare RFCs here. And I, I wanted, well, no, my wife wanted. Uh, Glory suggested, why don't you, you know, it's been a long time since you talked about the RFCs, um, and, you know, you, you've learned some lessons since then. Maybe you should actually go back and revisit those and talk about the lessons you've learned. I said, okay. And then I got the same paralyzed feeling seeing all of these uh, RFCs uh, arranged like this. And so, um, I said, what, what can I do about that? Well, okay, I decided to color code them. Um, so, um, I, I, I decided that, uh, you know, he, he, I, I, I would, uh, you know, uh, first of all, use letters, but I can say, you know, by a neat trick, uh, I, can, I can color code them in Vim. I like Vim. So uh, you, you may notice a, a pattern here. Uh, G stands for green, I mean, for good idea. Uh, C is, is uh, cyan or cultural community. Yeah, buts, the rejected ones. Uh, M is for modules will happen. You know, C pan's good, right? Um, but that means uh, shirking responsibility, we're not gonna deal with it. Uh, some of them were withdrawn and some of them we're just sort of completely bypassed by the new design. That they're just sort of not relevant anymore. Um, by the way, uh, M, that's supposed to be magenta. But my wife says, that's not magenta. And I believe her. She says, that's, that's mauve. But mauve works. <laughs> OK. Uh, so. Uh, So 
So I, I got this key and I started going through and I, I actually read through, well, some of my skimmed, uh, all of the RFCs again. It didn't take me six months this time, mainly because I because I, I, I couldn't figure out what order to talk about these was uh, I, I, I ordered them in um, uh, this is not the one I want nah, that's not the one I want either Okay, uh, yeah, something, something weird happened. So uh, let's just, yeah, was it this one? No, I did that one. There it is, okay. Okay, I took out all the notes because those are my those are the notes I'm speaking of from, and you know you don't want to see that. That would be just silly. Um, okay, the, but I, I marked the ones with bangs that ha that came up, ended up uh, making uh, uh, making up some um, 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 principles. So, and I can I can let me test this. It works. Yes. Okay. So. Um, with this color code, you, you can kind of see here that, that how, how some of these got rated. Some of, them, some of them were rated good. Some of them are yeah buts, like the yellow one here. Uh, as some of them were uh, withdrawn, like this one. Oddly enough, this one was withdrawn, but we did it. We did it. Uh, that happens uh, you know, several times. Uh, you know, on average, um, you know, there's statistics again, you know, uh, three, three 3.61 RFCs were written by each person, but in fact, a, a lot of people wrote one, and a lot of people wrote enormous gobs of them. Um, what else can we say about about them as a whole? Uh, you know, most people were, were were too hesitant to propose anything radical. They just wanted to change one thing, and then leave everything else the same. Um, there were some attractive nuisances. Everyone wants the colon. You already know that one. Everyone also wants the brackets. There aren't that many brackets in ASCII, folks. Especially you mathematicians with using square on one side and round on the other. No, 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 no. you can't have those. <laughs> um, but it was proposed. Um, you know, pragmas. We all love pragmas. Uh, especially RFC writers. They love their pragmas. Um, and everything was sol solved with pragmas. Or with hooks quote unquote, hooks. <laughs> you know, a hook means there's a conditional somewhere in the code that says, if this hook is set, call it. Um, and you get too many of those things, all you do is test conditionals all day. So hooks are kind of bad for performance. Uh, fortunately, the entire overloading system of, of uh, Perl 5 is hooks. <laughs> so that's something that changed. But anyway, let, let's actually look at some, some RFCs here. So, uh, 18, yeah, if I can type. Okay, that's probably, sorry if you can't read that. Um, so, the, you know, simple, simple uh, this is the, the form that they, they were in. Uh, let's 
get a little bit of color highlighting there. Okay, uh, so this very simple construct, inspired by the fourth language. Uh, immediate subroutines. Well, yeah, uh, it sounds, seems like a great idea, but the fact is, um, you know, uh, there's more powerful primitives. In, in particular, uh, we get ideas from the Lisp family languages about macros and hygienic macros. Uh, okay, uh, there we go. And I told you this was going to be hand to mouth. Yeah. So um, the the first principle that that uh, my randomized uh, set came up with here, which you've already seen, is <laughs> don't just do the first thing that occurs to you. Immediate subroutines. I mean, that it's an obvious thing to do. Have a subroutine that when you parse it, call, you call it. But it's not the most powerful thing we could be doing, and so. Um, Perl 6 has hygienic macros instead. Um, you know, we, we, we did source filters in, in Perl 5. That's sort of the same problem. It was kind of the first thing I thought of, and it was a bad idea. <laughs> um, we since uh, begun to recover from that. So, uh, let's see. The next one here. Translate in array context should return a histogram. Well, in, in Perl 6 nowadays, we have other primitives that, that can do, if you use .com, you can chop something to, up into characters very quickly. And if you use, um, uh, what's it called, .classify, it'll automatically classify and basically make a histogram for you. So, or, or put in, just put it into a bag and it'll make a histogram for you. So uh, that's, that's what we would do now in Perl 6. Uh, but the, you know, the thing is, this, this idea was in the Perl man page for years and years and years, and nobody ever implemented it. What does that say? It says, you ain't gonna need it. <laughs> so just because somebody proposes a feature, doesn't mean it has to go in. Look at the use cases. And we're, we're always looking at use cases. So, see, I can get there quicker by searching for bang. Yes, data types. Semi-finite, lazy lists. Well, uh, many of you know, let's see, number, that's number 24. Um, Oh, well. <laughs> Be that way. Okay. Um, and uh, this is one of those by, by Damien. And uh, so, you know, it was, it was basically just a proposal that you could, if you look at this, whoops, if you look at this here, you can leave off the, the right side of a, a range. That was the proposal. Um, and um, we, we debated that for a while, and it, we actually ended up making lists lazy throughout the whole language, not just ranges. And uh, that turned out to be a good thing, which we will probably get to, unless I talk too slow. But uh, th there's also a bad thing about this, which is, is why um, uh, I'm talking about it, which is, uh, one of the principles we discovered is what we call self-clocking code. And that is, if you have things that are ambiguous after them, like indirect objects, it doesn't know whether it's to expect a term or an operator, then you have a problem in your language. Having an having a operator here, an infix operator with no right term, is one of those things. You can't just leave out a term, because then the parser doesn't know whether it expects a term or a uh, a, uh, an infix. 
So this idea of self-clocking, which you see in UPC symbols that you, you scan with scanners, um, there's other ways that it comes out in natural languages, but it turns out to be a very important thing for error, error uh, detection. And a lot of our best errors in Perl 6 are because you, it saw two terms in a row and, uh, and then figured out why it, there was two terms in a row. So self-clocking code is, is a very important principle for us. Okay. Let's see, there's a, there's a uh, VI command. Z dot. Yeah, that puts it in the middle. Okay. Um, so, simplify do block syntax. Um, this was an interesting thing because, you know, there's this, this problem. It's 167. Uh, and they, they said, well, you know, why don't you make it so you can delete the semicolon after it? Um, and uh, maybe, maybe drop the do while you're at it. Uh, well, we didn't drop the do because it actually means something. But, you know, you have this problem in, in Perl 5 all the time. You can't quite remember which blocks are, have to have a semicolon and which blocks don't. Well, uh, we fixed that. And, and we fixed it generally. Um, you know, what's, the RFC proposes a Band-Aid. But what we really needed is, a, is an approach, uh, you know, sort of a regrow your limbs approach here. And so now in Perl 6, any, any curly on the end of a line it, um, implies a semicolon. It, it implies the end of a statement. Um, and it doesn't matter whether it's a built-in or not. They're all, uh, all the, all the uh, blocks are the same. Okay, where's the next one here? There it is. Uh, standard in, standard out, standard R, blah, blah, blah. Should become scalars. Well, that, that's accepted. Uh, let's see how, how accepted it was. Okay, well, yeah, it's, it's a really great idea. You know, these are magical symbols that um, are global in every package. Um, you know, how does that work? Well, there's this magical list of exceptions. If, it's, if you use this symbol, it's not in the current package, it's in the global package. And you know, uh, the, the designer of, of, of uh, Perl uh, was kind of an idiot when he was younger, and he <laughs> he put put in lots of uh, lots of lists of exceptions that you have to kind of memorize which which uh, functions uh, which one which functions take dollar underscore which ones don't, for instance. Uh, and this is another one of those lists you kind of have to know. So. Um, Another principle, avoid lists of exceptions. Uh, nowadays, these, these symbols are all uh, specially marked. Uh, they are scalars, but they're also specially marked that they are um, uh, globals with a, with a star twiddle, as we, we call it. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a bit more punctuation, but it, 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 it what? Oh yeah, higher. Ah, uh, higher, 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 <laughs> I hear the voice of angels. Uh, okay, um, higher <laughs> resolution time values. Yes, um, you know, all, the, all of these, um, it, it's, it's proposing essentially that we should base time on, on a real type and not, not the integers, and that's why this was accepted. You know, all these time, time systems that we have, they, they have number of seconds plus number of, of uh, milliseconds. Oh no, wait, that's not good enough. We'll, we'll do number of seconds plus number of microseconds. Oh wait, that's not good enough. Now we'll do number of seconds plus number of nanoseconds. That'll, that should be good enough for anyone. Um, why does this keep happening? Because people think of integers and thinking too, too, too low of a level. Time is, is, as we perceive it, continuous. So it should use a continuous real type, like floaty point. So, and you know, your floating point can, idea can, can extend to as much precision as far into the future and as far back as, as, as you care to uh, go. And we, the, you can pack a lot of seconds and nanoseconds into a floating point. So, um, principle, think ahead. <laughs> it's like, um, you know, if you see yourself making the same mistake over and over again, Make a different mistake. So, uh, 
real and they're opaque. Okay. Alternative array and hash slicing. Um, I mean, this, 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 this one, it's blue. Uh, it, it, it presents a real problem, but uh, we uh, blew way, no pun intended, we blew way past it in solving it in terms of, um, of uh, sigils that are, are invariant. They don't, they, don't, they don't change as you uh, dereference things. And consistent, uh, the way references work consistently. Uh, in, in Perl 6, uh, either everything is a reference or nothing is a reference. Um, so you don't have to worry about whether it's a reference or not most of the time. Uh, so yeah, uh, it, it turns out that, that now a subscript in Perl 6 is just a single element slice. So you, there's no difference, everything is a slice basically. Uh, it's just it knows if it's one element, it's a single element slice, subscript. Um, and the optimizer, you know, usually has enough information to make that fast. Or at least less slow. So, you know, we, we've looked for a lot of unifications. This is just one example of, uni of unification of two different ideas that can be combined. And sometimes doing that simplifies things. Um, and sometimes it doesn't cost very much. Made a, I should make a macro of that, shouldn't I? Okay, uh, multi-line comments. Um, this was one RFC. There's another RFC that says embedded comments. And it turns out that, you know, you can just, there's another unification. You can say, let's, let's have the same construct for both. So we introduced a, a, a multi-line comment that also works for embedded comments. You just need a beginning and an end. Uh, so if I, uh, Uh, say hi. Boy, they put the back ticket a funny place here. That should work. Well, <laughs> um, hit here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, there's a bug. The short program it still has a bug. Uh, Anyway, principle, kill two weird birds with one stone if you can. Another way of talking about unification. So, what's our next one here? Whoops, that's not it. Lexical variables made default. Uh, This is basically just a proposal to make strict vars the default. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's some confusion about the, the nature of dynamic versus uh, lexical variables in the, in the thing. But by and large, you know, if it's green, it says we, we accept this idea. Maybe your solution was bogus, but, um, uh, but uh, this is a good idea. So, I mean, this is what we did. Um, and, you know, you, you can, there's a lot of discussion about whether it should be the default. But uh, since, since we made this pick, um, almost nobody in the Perl 6 community has, has regretted it. Um, it makes it really nice. You always find your typos very fast. Um, and there's uh, just lots of benefits for, for declaring your variables. We can still relax that and, and there's work on that right now, but um, you know, th this idea of picking the right default, there's a lot of places where I kind of picked the wrong default in the early design of Perl. So, um, you know, <laughs> I could go on about that. Uh, I probably will. More functions from set theory to manipulate arrays. Well, you see this is one of those yeah, but ones. Um, what's the problem with this? Well, the problem is arrays are not very much like sets. I mean, they, they, they seem like a, a set of things in them, but you could have duplicates. You can't have duplicates in a set. 
A set is actually more like the, the keys of a hash. And the interface to a, a set, actually, in Perl 6, works much more like a, a um, much more like a, a hash than it does. A, a, we have a, a hash that just happens to map to Booleans. And if it's true, it's in the set. If it's false, it's out of the set. And it actually automatically deletes it from the hash of, that, of the set type. Uh, similarly with bags, it just maps the keys to a number of how many elements there are in the bag. Um, and so, uh, principle there, you know, watch out for XY problems. Uh, and and you, you, you notice XY problems when somebody asks, um, I want to solve this using that. And often you have to, it, it's very difficult often if you're interacting with them to break them out of the idea that they have to use that to solve this. Just tell me your problem and I'll tell you what the, what the better way to solve it is. Don't solve it with arrays. Um, but this is, you know, just assuming that, that, that arrays are the right way to, to represent sets. Uh, file handles should use uh, star as a type prefix if type blobs are eliminated. Well, in fact, we did uh, we did use we did eliminate type uh, type blobs in Perl six, uh, thankfully, <laughs> but we stole star for something else as a term, so we can't use it for a sigil. Um, it turns out to be a very handy thing. Um, hmm. Wow, <laughs> strange keyboard. Um, it turns out to be a, a very handy thing that, that what we do use star for, but uh, don't have time to go into that. Uh, worth much more than type globs or star as a sigil. And basically, you can't have enough sigils to classify everything. The type system uh, should handle the, the fine gradations of, of meaning. Uh, separate from sigils. Sigils are for um, representing large scale concepts like this is associative or this is positional, um, which many types share. Uh, we, we, we call those roles now. Okay, module scope control. Well, that's the same one. Uh, this is, um, you know, it's 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 the, it's importing, uh, having control of your imports such that they go into your your lexical scope rather than into the package scope, which you know in Perl five you import into the package scope. Uh, but we we fix that rather than by making it an option, as this proposed. Uh, we actually, you know, just fixed it by making it the right default. By default, things import lexically into uh, Perl 6. So you don't get this mysterious action at a distance that sometimes plagues uh, global variables. Perl resource configuration. Well, we, we can learn something from the things that were accepted. We can also learn something from the uh, uh, RFCs that, that were rejected. This is basically uh, let's have an RC file, whether you think that means run commands or resource configuration. Um, the problem with RC files is you make changes to them and suddenly your program is in a, in a different language than it thinks it is. The parser gets very confused uh, and one of our principles uh, that um, we, we uh, kind of override the other principles is we always must know what language we're in uh, when we're parsing. That's why we don't do two-pass parsing. So um, it's okay if you, the language you're in is intentionally generic, but accidental genericity, genericity is, uh, is a bad thing. You want to know uh, how much your, your language is general and how much of it is specific and uh, otherwise the computer is going to get confused and so will you. Um, so 
So that one's turned down. Okay. All right. Uh, object class hooks into. Uh, this one is marked community, not because it's not a technical thing, uh, but because the community things are things I've, I've deferred to other people to worry about and not me. And in fact, the principal is Larry is now omniscient. I don't actually know if this is implemented the way that, that this RFC is. Uh, I, I, I don't know how printf works in Perl 6 right now. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> um, I suspect they have some system like this, but uh, I, I can't just worry about everything. Um, okay, uh, here, here's another one. Uh, operators, polymorphic comparisons, proposes uh, that we overload equal equal to do generic comparison. So if it's two strings, it does a string comparison. If it's two, you know, it's basically steal it from the numeric comparison that you, you're familiar with. And uh, so that one is um, kind of left behind in the dust because um, under the principle that we stick with Perl's uh, operator-rich philosophy, if you need more operators, define more operators that, are, that work on the, the types and coerce. So we still keep the numeric e equality in comparison. We keep the string comparisons and we keep those separate from the generic comparisons. There's another, a third rank of operators corresponding to those, which are generic comparisons. Um, in fact, we stole CMP to be the generic comparison, and string comparison is now LEG for less than, equal, or greater. So, I guess Perl 6 has legs. Uh, you guys are falling asleep, and it's my fault. Okay. Brace matching for Perl regular expressions. This one is also uh, kind of rejected. Um, because it's, it's a very special, specialized tool, and it turns out that we have, uh, you know, uh, pot, uh, more, more important uh, er, or more, more general tools that will do the same thing. We got grammars and recursive regexes and everything, all that sort of stuff out the wazoo that makes it. You, you should just do brace matching the way the Perl 6 grammar does it, because <laughs> the Perl 6 grammar is written in Perl regular expressions now. So, you know. Uh, don't buy that special tool you see on TV. <laughs> um, okay, well, I, I, you know, I'm kind of running low on time here, so I'm just going to dash through and, and, uh, and uh, pop up. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> Hang things on the right peg. There's just an awful lot of things, you know, the special variables. They're all globals. No, they should, most of them be object attributes. Hang things on the right peg and then you don't have to worry about it. Threading works better if you hang things on the right peg. <laughs> if you're gonna generalize, do it. <laughs> you know, um, the, 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 a lot of these uh, RFCs were kind of half measures and, and, and you know, uh, we, uh, we now have a very general way of, of pulling in foreign objects. Um, through what we call representational polymorphism. That's very general. <laughs> it's so general you don't even know what it means. Um, <laughs> but it's an important concept in Perl 6, meaning we even hide, and when you define a class and you have the attributes in it, we even hide uh, how those things are stored from the class itself. I mean, there's things that are private to the class. This is more private than that. The class doesn't even know how it's stored. The representation uh, tells the class how to store its stuff. Um, and that's a, that's a, a very general, uh, very powerful concept. It means we can just pull C and whatever structs in and just use them without having to translate them uh, to Perl 5 objects, which is slow, to, to hashes, uh, which is also slow in Perl 6. <laughs> okay, new pragma scope. Do what I mean, auto declarations. Uh, Auto declarations, we just decided they were evil because the DWIM doesn't. Uh, keep default Perl free from constraints such as warnings and strict. Um, yeah, people really do get attached to their sloppy thinking. Uh, 
Uh, Multi-way comparisons, they don't work in Perl 5. Uh, Uh, let's see. Nope, that won't. Uh, I don't have time to demonstrate. You know, if you if you do uh, uh, multi-way comparisons in uh, in Perl six, you can say say one is less than two is less than three, and we can say one is less than two equals two plus than three, and that's true. Uh, if we say three, that's, that's false. But it will return, oops, E. Well, I'm not, that might be false. But if you try this sort of thing in, in Perl, it, it does both of the, the inequalities before it does the equalities because of the precedence. And so what, what we had to do was combine precedence levels. We, were, we had to question the uh, authority of the C language to dictate our uh, precedence levels. Uh, separating those didn't buy much. Uh, putting them together means you can string those uh, comparisons together. Okay, uh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, uh oh. It's broken. Something is, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of time here. Let's go down to the end. <laughs> One should not get away with ignoring system uh, errors. Or no, Perl should stay Perl. That's the good one. Now, this is a, a very a funny one. Um, because it, it, it's done, done early. Uh, number 28. Let's look at it. And, and I, you know, my initial reaction to, to, to that is, yeah, Perl should stay Perl. Uh, <laughs> We've got a golden opportunity, says Simon, here to turn Perl into whatever on earth we like. Let's not take it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a wonderful RFC. I, I, I love it. I just absolutely love it. Um, because it's simultaneously so right and so wrong. Um, uh, you know, all of these other uh, principles and, and, and difficulties, the problems that all these RFCs pointed out, we needed to fix as many of them as we could. We didn't want to do like Python and just timidly fix a few, three, few things and then still get stuck with an incompatible version. You know, they're, they're still fighting. Well, we should switch to 3.0. No, we can't. And they did it for such paltry reasons. I'm so glad we said, let's break everything that ought to be broken, uh, even if we took, took a, a little longer, because we're going to end up with something much better. Uh, so it, it's funny because the, the, he talks about the, the, the attractive nuisances here that we should watch out for. Object orientation. <laughs> well, you know, Perl 6 is object, everything is an object. You don't have to think of it that way, but everything is. Strong typing. Well, you know, we have gradual typing, but it's, you know, you can use it for strong typing. Functional programming. Um, Perl 6 is also through and through functional programming. <laughs> uh, not, not, not as a religion. I mean, it doesn't force you to do everything with immutables, but it leans that way. <laughs> it encourages you to do functional programming. <laughs> Making parsing easier. <laughs> Perl 6. The parser is written in Perl 6. It is now good at parsing itself. I wouldn't try to parse Perl 5 in Perl 5. Uh, I mean, there are people crazy like Adam. <laughs> but uh, so in each of these specifics, yes, we went raving mad. <laughs> um, nevertheless, it's all of these principles that we were following that kind of stem from Perl 5 in the first place, and the way, the way I think, um, is why Perl 6 is still Perl, and Perl 5 is Perl, and they're both sister languages, or maybe mother-daughter languages, I don't know. And um, 
So it's those it's those principles that that tie us together. And uh, you know we ha we have cultural differences, uh, and the the Pearl Five Pearl Six divide kind of emphasizes some of those cultural differences. But we also went not just to Walt Disney World, but we went to Epcot Center, and you know. It's kind of fakey. They, they at least got nationals from each country in. <laughs> so at least the people are real, even if the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the national flavor of each uh, uh, spot is, is a little fakey. But you know, they're, they're, they're trying to demonstrate something that different cultures can get together and, uh, and show how they are different and still keep their common bond. Um, you know, Disney believes you know that the uh, individual national culture, national cultures, are wonderful. Uh, if Disney were live, he'd, he'd live, he'd believe that both Pearl Five and Pearl Six are wonderful in their own way. Um, and he also believes that it's a small world after all, and we're all in it together. Thank you for listening.